Um, while I admit students in the class, sorry about this. Um, all right, we're, we're going to get started. Um, uh, welcome to all of everyone in the class and everyone else who's watching uh, the School of, Vis School of Art Visiting Artists Lecture Series tonight. Um, as always, please ask questions and make comments in the chat, both in Zoom and YouTube, and we'll have uh, time for discussion, I think, afterwards. Um, next week, uh, Bernard Lee, who is uh, an illustrator, will be our, our speaker, um, and he's also an SU alum. So, um, sorry. Um, I want to thank Marty Blake for making tonight happen. Um, I know our students had a great discussion with Liz just, uh, just recently, about an hour ago. Um, and I feel like we're so lucky to have Liz Fang join us tonight. She's a very in-demand illustrator and for good reasons. I feel like my understanding of the world over the last several years has been shaped by her many images and illustrations um, in publications such as the New Yorker, the New York Times, BuzzFeed, and countless others. Um, I feel very fortunate to be able to see a lot of her work in that way. Um, her illustrations are elegant and thoughtful. She uses color and compositions to make complex ideas accessible. In addition to her editorial work, Liz Fang has also worked on advertising projects with Apple, Penguin, Airbnb, and Chanel. She's illustrated several children's books such as Everest and Our World, a first book of geography. Um, she's received numerous awards, all of the awards, I feel like, um, from the Society of Illustrators, Communication Arts, 3x3, American Illustration, uh, the Bologna Ragazzi Award for her book Everest, uh, the D and 80 Silver Pencil Award, um, among others. Um, Liz was born and raised in China by artist parents and studied illustration at China Academy of Art. She received her MFA in illustration practice from Maryland Institute College of Art in 2014, and she is currently based in New York. I am so happy to introduce Lisk Fang. Thank you for coming tonight. So I will turn it over to you. <laughs> okay, so thank you everyone for coming to today's talk because I, I do feel like like I don't put any makeup on and uh, because of COVID, I'm sitting in my apartment my, my apartment is literally like a shelter right now, like to be honest, because I, I don't do a lot of cleaning at this moment. I'm about to like uh, moving, so like, I'm moving soon, so that's why. <laughs> so I, I feel like wearing like a t-shirt and sit like in my living room and talking to all of you, I feel like still magical. Um, and thanks to COVID, uh, I don't need to travel to, to give you this talk, um, but also, feel sad to not see you in person but hopefully in the future we can still um, see you at least once in the future <laughs> um, so i will uh, talk about a lot of things today um, basically it's my life my illustrations my uh, freelancing experience and i want you to kind of get to know what illustration life is about and also, also how I become an illustrator, of course, and also um, how I feel about illustration right now, especially during the pandemic. So I will share my screen right now. Uh, we have roughly like one hour and a half. Um, do we have like a Q&A session today or no? Uh, yes, if, if you're able to do okay. it. Um, yeah, okay. and so people put their things in the chat and I'll sort of moderate and, and, and ask the questions of everyone. Okay. So. okay, okay. So I will just share my um, PowerPoint at this moment. So hopefully you can, can you see, see, see that? Yes. Is it full screen for you, for everyone or no? Yes, looking good. Oh. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So today I'm going to talk about a lot of things covered like illustration, life, and freelancing. Okay. So the first thing I want to I, I want to introduce my art art life to everyone, um, especially because I'm a Chinese, full blood Chinese. So 
uh, all the experience I had was like pure Chinese style. So I, I want to show you firstly how I get into illustration. So 2005 and 2008 is actually my high school period. Um, this is my high school. It looks like small cages piled onto each other, basically. Uh, it's Hainin number one middle school, which is like famous for it's like um, strict um, rules and studying. So I can't, I cannot imagine do any arts um, related uh, things during my high school time, middle school and high school. I mean the same school. The left side was the middle school. The first building was my building. And then the, the right side was my um, high school building. <laughs> so it was like my six year life are in the same, same place. It looks like um, just like a huge factory. Like we had like uh, 56 to 60 students per classroom. And we have uh, each year we have uh, 18 classes. <laughs> so it's huge, um, a huge school with a lot of amount of students. And my high school time is basically a chaos, a mess, because I was like trying really hard to learn art, but uh, there will not be a choice for me in during the school time. So I had to seek um, help outside the school. Uh, my mom is like an art teacher. So thanks to her, I, I got to know a lot of things about um, like how to get into art school. Uh, the whole process is kind of complicated. I will show you a little bit. So in, in my high school time, this test thing is like the hugest thing the, the biggest thing in during the whole whole three year of my journey, it, it feels like a journey climbing different mountains, but the university of entrance examination is one of the highest of them. So I feel like I'm driving like a little minivan and then try to climb like Himalaya, you know, so it, it, it do feel like super, super precious um, because I kind of have no choice but face the music. So this is like not the exact the photo, but like I, I try to like find like a similar a classroom. Um, like this is exactly what happened when I was in high school. Like we, we have piles of books like pile on, onto our little tiny table. Uh, in winter, like it feels like out of like oxygen. <laughs> yeah. And this is actually like an illustration, uh, like a photo of a real um, art exam. So every uh, February, March area, uh, like winter time, basically, um, every year we have this art, humongous art test for each student who want to get into art school. So there will be like a, a one time big one for the whole province and also uh, several smaller ones for individual schools. Uh, usually those individual schools are better schools, um, such as my school, China Academy of Art. Uh, they, they, they have their own um, exam. So how they decide your life They're using this magical stick. So they have this like magical wand kind of stick. They look at all the students. They basically give you the same thing to draw at the same time for one uh, major. Uh, and then everyone draws the same thing and then they pick out the good ones. Um, so first of all, they, they walk around and then they pick out like the 90 mark range or 89, uh, 80 mark range or 70 or 60. And then they collect all of the pieces and hire like <clears throat> university students um, from the school and ask them to hold each illustration uh, or drawing closer so that they can able to see details and able to give them like detailed marks, like 85, 86, you know. So, this is basically my life. Like I, my whole dream life is based on them because um, when I try to get into art school, I know China Academy of Art has illustration major. Uh, during my high school time, I already started like publishing um, uh, illustrations and editorials on newspapers uh, and magazines and stuff. So I, I got really, really interested in um, drawing illustration, but I, find it difficult to, to, to look for this major in China at that moment. So I, I, I saw this major uh, illustration, just had this major for two years uh, from this school, China Academy of Art, one of the best school in China. Um, and then I just tried really hard. This photo is actually from my school. Like I recognized the, the door immediately. Um, 
So after we finish the art test, we go back to our regular factory kind of school, my, my factory kind of school. Uh, and then we go back to other subjects like Chinese, English and mathematics and other like physics and stuff. So, so what we will do is study hard and get our marks and try to reach our goal to the art school. So during that difficult um, studying time, I developed my illustration um, method and I do a lot, I have a lot of faith in illustration and I daydream so much during my um, study uh, period using uh, illustration. So these are some of my like 15, 16 year old like uh, illustrations I want to show you. Uh, this is where, is exactly where I started. Um, I had my own blog during that time and that blog went virus. That's why I, I can uh, publish things uh, because my blog was like uh, studying uh, and illustration and live based uh, blog for from like a high school student um, point of view. So I had a lot of like um, journals, illustration diaries um, published on that blog so that some of the art directors, they saw it and then they contact me and want to feature my illustration uh, monthly. They want to have like diaries. So I just put uh, works on on my blog and then they will feature it every time. Um, give me a little bit of money during that time. So like the center uh, lower one was like, I write like very poetic, like little things to talk about how lonely I am, how difficult it is, you know. Uh, during the time I already got really familiar with Photoshop and also um, Intos. Like I begged my mom to get an Intos for me for like two years and finally she got it for me. Uh, when I was like 16. So right after that, I took off like my digital illustration journey first. Um, r the right one is actually uh, the little girl with the rabbit and gigantic flowers. That piece was like one of my favorite, one of my first piece I got, uh, one of my first pieces I, right after I got my Intos 3. Before that, I used mouse. I used mouse to draw illustrations. The left first one was like, uh, mouse illustration <laughs> and drawing in garage. All, all my daily time, um, when I had a chance to draw, I spent like hours uh, with my mom drawing in garage, like the dark and wet um, basement kind of style uh, room. I still remember that smile, the garage smell. And this was me like in high school, um, trying to be like very positive and give like my friends and um, teachers, like some energy during the time being silly. This is a pork bun. I, th I think that was a pork bun in my, in my mouth. And this is a, another illustration I dedicated to my mom uh, because when we experience the whole journey of the art school test, we have to travel to different, um, different cities. And then she really helped me through the whole process. I do remember like huge snowstorm happened in uh, 2007. And then she like waited outside for like three hours um, just for one test. Um, and then um, she hugged me every time I went out and then we like went for like a soup or a, like a dumpling, <laughs> you know? So, so those are like very, very uh, important memories for me. Uh, it reminds me every time that for me, to try to be an illustrator is a very difficult journey, very struggling and very difficult journey. So I still remember the result day. So the result day is my mom and me, we try to like call, I, I'm, I think I'm trying to like search on the internet and my mom is like trying to make the phone call because you can like call the system and then type my code and then you will have the marks. I'm, I'm doing the digital version. And then she got it first and she yelled the number to me. And then I knew I will get into my dream school, the school which my parents both graduated from. Uh, and then she said like, let's you got it. And then I rolled downstairs. I, I was like too excited. And then I rushed out and I rolled downstairs. I tripped and then rolled downstairs. And my mom ordered KFC. <laughs> So I, I do remember that day, like we had KFC, like so specifically KFC. 
I want this like family family uh, bucket for like fried chicken, like uh, and a lot of um, uh, I don't remember what what else, but like a gigantic Coke. Like I want those. I want those food for for that night, like specific night. Smashed potatoes, yes, smashed potatoes. My favorite, one of my favorite from KFC. And you know, China, Chinese KFC is like way better than in the U.S. We have like a lot of like Peking Peking duck flavor roll and other stuff. So so we have a lot of like choices. We even have rice. Mm. So it was like delicious. <laughs> Ektar, we even have Ektar that night. I remember that. So after that, I went to my dream to do China Academy of Art, um, and I spent like beautiful four years. Um, in the illustration major, which I, I can never think of, like another choice. Uh, the school is like very, very beautiful itself and very like poetic. The architecture is like designed by a famous uh, architecture in China. Um, so I, I do feel like very, very lucky to have this journey to try to become an illustrator. It, as if like I saw like a star and try really hard to grab it for once. Um, I, I do realize that this experience taught me a lot in my life. Um, it's first of all, super, super tough. We have tons of people, as you see from the photo, we have like a lot of people try to get into one major. My major uh, only accepted like 25 people. Uh, in, from my uh, city, it has like 800 people want to get into this major. So 800 people compete 25 seats. Um, and I don't even count it other cities. So it's a horrible like memory for thinking about that. It's like, I was like very fragile the whole time um, and try to be like very tough, but actually very fragile and scared. So I was just talking about my nightmare like uh, an hour ago. Uh, I had this nightmare every year, every month almost like, um, I dreamed of my high school teacher that called me and asked me to go back. Uh, to take the exam again. <laughs> she said like, where are you? You only have like a week left. Where are you? Uh, you have to come back for the test or you can't go to the college. Yeah, I still have that memory. So, uh, so fresh and so, so tough. So I'm really, really thankful for being here um, to do the illustration. I really enjoy. So after that, I decided to go come to the US um not a no I, I to be honest I don't feel like a super super necessary that I have to get the degree um the main purpose for me to come to the U.S. is I want to experience different kinds of uh, life um, I want to change to another place and then um, try to develop my own journey um, continue to try to do illustration in another place. So uh, that's why I decided to go to uh, MICA, the grad program um, for illustration major. Um, so that was also two years, uh, very quickly and very happy. And this was my thesis show. I did uh, three minutes and a half, almost four minutes, like stop motion animation, um, 12 screen printing and 44 pages children's book. I finished everything. I always believe that if you want to make your graduation less guilty, it's you finish everything for your dream project and move on. Because I do believe that during the school time, that's the only opportunities for me to have this amount of time. You paid for this amount of time to do as experimental as you can be. So that's my whole, whole my, my goal. I don't really care about like, this thesis will take me like to other platform or become famous. I never thought of that. I just want to have this project done. And this project is a gift for 25, uh, 24 year old me. So after that, I came to New York City um, as just like a lot of my other classmates. Um, and I stay in the same apartment for seven years. <laughs> so I, went to Society of Illustrators. I have a lot of memories, flashback um, with my family. And then here is me um, after one or two years of journey, um, and finally get the visa and settle down in New York City. Huh, it's a beautiful story, right? 
I knew it. So after that, I got a lot of um, like these are uh, some of the projects I got right after I graduated. So some of the clients, it seems big, but it's actually not that difficult to reach out. For example, the New York Times, they requires a lot of illustrators every day. So, you know, they always like try to hire new illustrators. A lot of my friends' first projects are from New York Times. So don't be afraid to talk to art directors from New York Times. Don't be scared. Um, a lot of the um, things here are free. For example, Fireworks Quarterly, they don't pay a lot of money. They don't pay any money, but they are a beautiful zine comp like uh, publisher. So I, I do a lot of free projects at that moment. I Some of them are like low budget. Um, these, these are like uh, projects I had six months after I graduated. And these are like pretty much right now. Um, a lot more diverse and then a lot ambitious looking. So I do believe that um, after several years, after your uh, portfolio, your career settled a little bit, uh, things will start to span like slowly. It takes some years. <laughs> it really takes some years. Um, and this is my self portrait I did. Um, 2000, I think 2014 or 15 for one magazine cover. Uh, a lot of people remember this illustration. I also remember this because I finally find, found out that I can stay here. Um, and then this is such a beautiful story, right? She lives happily ever after. <laughs> You're all wrong. I'm just telling very realistic story of my own journey, but I thought staying here and start getting jobs would be the end of my tragic, tragic or like struggling journey. But no, 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 no. I will show you why. So after being a freelance, this, there is a whole lot of uh, difficulties and the challenges are bizarre. Like I've never experienced those challenges before. As if like you already earn enough money like to at least pay the rent and stay at home and you still have struggles. Like how can you imagine that? But it, it is, like it is so struggling for me to be a freelance illustrator. And let me tell you what. So you can see this illustration, right? It's so cozy. It's like a dream life. If you close your eyes, you imagine freelancing. What it means to you wearing pajamas, you know, and had a nice coffee, cup of coffee with your beautiful cat in your, in, on, your, on your lap and then have your computer on top of your lap as well while sitting in Muji couch with a beautiful plant next to you. Oh, what a beautiful day. That's a lot of people's freelance job, uh, dreams. Like you can work like that and then be like very comfortable. No, I don't feel like that every moment. <laughs> So this is work and life. This looks beautiful, 50-50, right? Like it's uh, 10 out of 10, very perfect, uh, even equal uh, work and life uh, rate. But to be honest, this will never happen to you. A lot of the richer people or like older generations, they, their goal is try to get this, less work, and more life. Like you, you do less work and you earn more money and you have a bigger time, me time, for you to travel, to, to relax. And for me, for freelance, I have this. On every corner of my work and my life, they stick to each other. Like for example, right now it's 7 uh, p.m people who work for a company probably already like cooking, but I'm still teaching, you know? <laughs> so, um, so my dinner time will be probably like nine today. Uh, after that, I will need to reply some emails and then do some sketches for tomorrow because tomorrow I have another thing. I need to go to my house, uh, um, my like new apartment to, to check on something. So I need to travel to Manhattan. So 
I need to have multiple time for, I, I need to have a lot of time for my, tra my trip to, to Manhattan. So that means I need to do sketches tonight. Um, also tomorrow I have another meeting with another friend. So there are small, tiny, small things stick to your other things. It becomes like a huge, gigantic, weird shape life and word combination, just like this. And this is me daily dealing with different stuff. For example, invoices, feeding cat, contract, tax season, multitask projects, social network, emails, phone calls, coffee time, tea time, gym, we work. Uh, I, go, I, I think I need to get rid of that because I don't, I don't rent, we, we work anymore. And teaching and student, washing dishes, laundry, boyfriend, and blah, blah, blah. And a lot more things you need to worry about. Even calling a mom will be a thing, you know. It, it's, it's like everything you deal with them almost at the same time, especially like tech seasons. It's like insane. <laughs> so for, for me, being a freelancer, like paperwork are very involved. I, I never thought of my whole day, half of my day is dealing with paperwork doing invoices and doing contract and stuff, very difficult. Um, and then after two or three years of doing freelance, I started to not feel about drawing. Like I start to feel less about drawings as if drawing become like a blurry friend, a blurry object. It feels like a job or not a job. I don't know what to say. I don't know who are you, who you are. Like, I, I can't not tell what it is. Like, am I happy about being the illustrator? Am I happy about drawing? And it has a lot of things to involve. You know, you if you want to do the illustration freelancing jobs, you also need to have like a lot of skills. You need to watch TVs. Uh, I mean, like uh, those like uh, Skillshare classes, for example, uh, to, to, to make yourself uh, better. Uh, you want to have a degree if you want to teach, you need to enter competitions, you, you need to take care of your health as, as well. Also, a lot of things you need to do is self-branding and social and a lot of emails and invoices and contracts. And those are drawing? I, I'm confused about that um, after several years of doing illustration. I'm so confused. These things equals happy? These things equals money? Or what? Are they illustration? Are they part of the job? So I started to have this, this very uncomfortable feeling about drawing and, or illustration. And then I see things differently. That was a bad example, but I do feel like I myself have some issues, but I also have issues with illustration during that moment when I cannot get rid of anything or I, I, I try to make things a little bit more clear, but I cannot. So I'm scared of drawing during that time. I feel like the drawing is not my friend anymore. I thought we were friends, but why you're so heavy just like this? You know, if you understand illustration major, or if you know what an illustration could do, I would say illustration major is made out of water. It fits a lot of different containers. You can do gallery, you can do product designer, branding, graphic design, freelancing, um, art director, tech company, animation, like advertising, comic, games, teacher, you know. so. There are many things you can do. There are even more uh, job op, uh, options than this. And then beyond that, I have to do a lot of paperwork. Like one job, I have contract invoices and vendor and W9. And then I got the check for each job. And this is some of my uh, W9. And this is some of my invoices. And these are some of my job flows. I, I do this because I tried I, I try myself try my best to see what kind of what amount of jobs I can get. And I tried it from 2014 to 2019. 
and I do feel like I need a break. So it's way over balance. I have a lot of small um, projects going on, and but I can't get out of it. So 2020, I decided to say no to lots of the project. I feel relieved, a little bit of relief. At least I can have a time to uh, to think inside again. And thanks to COVID, thanks to COVID, really thanks to COVID. Um, COVID gave me this time to, to think further. And then also, we illustrators, we need to do a lot of self promo, like website, business card, postcards, code emails, or even get email lists from uh, for clients. Um, a lot of the events and openings and competitions, social media, book festival and comic festival. These are all part of the job. So it's all multitasking. It, it feels like you have to do self branding. You have to do gallery. You have to do like um, like fine art style thinking, but it has to fit for like a, a polite art function. So it's very difficult, so difficult for my, for one person's brain. Even a lot of people ask me about this, agents or not, agents or not, like exclusive, non-exclusive, which one is better? Do you want to get one agent? And why you want to get an agent? Why not? I decided to not to do it because I, I went with non-exclusive before and I do feel like um, a lot of projects they gave me um, are not interested enough. Um, and I just want to stay back a little bit. For exclusive agencies, they're good because uh, if you're famous or you are kind of like stable on the income, they will offer you some like very nice service. For example, bargain for you, do the emails for you, um, negotiate the price for you. Uh, and you do the paperwork for you. So they will take like 25% off. Uh, they will take that 20%, uh, to 30% uh, to 30%, um, income from your income uh, to their pocket. So these are just personal choices. I wouldn't recommend anything or not, but for beginners, I do recommend a non-exclusive uh, agencies so that you can try to do the paperwork yourself to practice. And at the same time, same time they will get something someday for you because non-exclusive um, agencies tend to have more more illustrations on their list. So they will have a lot of people underneath you, uh, underneath uh, the agencies. So um, they will give you less jobs. So I want to show you some of my project, project uh, experience. Um, a lot of people divide it in, on different genre, but I want to divide it with time. So short turnaround project, in my opinion, is definitely editorial. And sometimes, uh, um, like, sometimes some little projects uh, other than editorial. So I will show you some examples. So before that, I want to talk about editorial a little bit. So editorial, as you know, is you have one article and you do the illustration for the article, right? That's how simple it is. It's very simple method, but it's one of the, actually one of the most difficult subject for illustrators to do. So this is a normal process for one newbie illustrator who got the article. So first of all, you got the article, right? And you read through it. And, and then you try really, really hard to find one idea or several sketches to fit into the article. So you will normally be trapped. For example, some financial magazine asks you to do like, um, debt, and you will draw money. Some scientific uh, magazine asks you to do like, like some experiment. You draw like people wearing like white coats, like very stereotype uh, ideas. Those illustrations it will work for the client, but it's not attractive at all. You don't even like it yourself. Um, to me, the one of the better solutions for editorial brainstorming is actually the same. You got the article and you read through. And you, first of all, you have some keywords, keywords from the article. At least you will know if the article is positive or negative on that point. If the article has any important element you have to draw. And then the second is what you really enjoy to draw first. And then the third one is research. So, and you get three different sketches. 
um, all three sketches should be all your favorite and you send it to client and make this project a little bit fun. So I will show you some example. It's very articulate to talk about or very difficult to talk about, but I will show you some examples on my transition. And then this one is basically the three le levels of brainstorming. Um, the first one is the surface. Surface is you read through the article and you just draw whatever the article is talking about. Very shallow, but it worked. The second one is, in my opinion, like slightly more personal level, your language, your brain, your interest. Try to create your own personal piece based on the article. And then the third one, uh, even like experiment with um, like concept or is composition or colors, you know, even do art creation on that. It sounds very easy, but when you got the article, it's so easy to get lost from the article or from the uh, art director's direction. So these are some of my examples for uh, New York Times uh, illustrations. These are all like very short turnaround. Um, some, some of them are like two hours. Like for, for example, the, the left corner one was like three hours, I think, for OPED. So this is actually my very first illustration for New York Times. It is bad. I know it is really, really bad. But I was like still very happy. I got like three copies of that newspaper and jumping up and down um, in my bed because I only had $2 in my bank account during that time. So I was like, oh yeah, I earned like 200 bucks for a tofu size black and white illustration. Yeah, it's very, very tiny. Uh, during the time, I don't understand anything about the editorial. And this one is slightly better. This one is for book review. Um, it was like, um, I think 2016 during that time. So I got a lot better for sketches. So. Um, I even try to like shape the art director's direction. For example, the right corner one, the top right corner one. I'm trying to tell the, I was trying to tell the art director that what if you go design the words around my illustration? You know, so sometimes you can make your own decision for some of the projects. Not only art director can tell you what to do, but you can also tell art director what, what you want to do. So it is very interesting to communicate with people because they're not your boss, you're equal, you can talk. So I find I, I find out about that uh, after I gained more confidence with my sketches and my working process, I got better works out of it as well. So this is the final. It's very, very different from um, the first one. This one is actually a book review uh, one. So this, these three sketches are very interesting. They are actually, for 2017's Oscar, 16 or uh, 17's Oscar, I don't remember, but like um, they picked the right, the third one, um, because this article is actually published one day before Oscar. So uh, when they picked the third idea, I knew we need to predict, we need to kind of have meetings and predict which, which several movies will be more awarded. So we predict uh, four movies and we got, we got, we got it right. So, so we even like send emails to each other being like, oh yeah, we, we got it right. So the first one is Arrival. The second one is Moonlight. Um, the third one is La La Land. And the fourth one is Manchester by the Sea. We got it all right. You know, it's one, one day ahead of the, the Oscar time. And this one is uh, the Brexit, the London, uh, 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 Britain, UK's um, Brexit uh, night. Like we, we had to do, me and my boyfriend both got uh, articles from New York Times. We need to do uh, articles about that. And then uh, this is my final. So sometimes when you do editorial, you need, even need to pay attention on skin tones or, you know, politics. Um, so, you know, the first time I try to do this final, I make all the hands white gloves because I don't want to show any skin tone. So I make all of them wearing white gloves and then the art director said it looks still all white. 
So I was like, okay, let's make only line work. And then I get rid of all the white color, um, the gloves and draw whole hands. And then he said, it looked as not as good as the, the glove version. So in the end, I decided to do transparent uh, white hands, AKA blue hands that no one can sue me or judge um, any of this illustration. So it's very difficult for us sometimes. Um, we need to pay attention on gender and skin tone, a lot of things. So this is another project I did for a financial magazine. Um, this was actually the moment where I discovered um, like you have to draw the favorite things to, to your, your favorite things. So this is um, a financial magazine about stockings, uh, but uh, the theme is too crowded about to burst. And I did like probably like 10 sketches, none of them worked. And then the art director even called me um, by phone and she said like, stop sending me sketches and take a rest, take a deep breath. Um, um, and then send me some sketches tomorrow because I kept sending her and none of them works, you know. Um, and then I, she suddenly asked me one question. She said, what's your favorite thing to draw? And then I paused and I, st I start thinking about it. I was like, oh my God, oh my God. I never thought of that while sketching for a financial magazine. So I told her, I like to draw people. And then I came up with these two, um, two sketches immediately, like after probably like 20 minutes later. Um, and then she picked one. And then this is one of my first like uh, editorial pieces that I really like and enjoy. It's very like me, instead of um, trying to draw like very editorial, editorial illustration. So if you're a narrative person, you can draw editorial very narrative with no problem. If you're very fantasy, you got a um, stock market um, article. You can still draw it very, very uh, fantasy. It did not matter. So you sometimes you just switch out the topics or the character or the place. You know, um, if you 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 got this market. Uh, article about like Wall Street. Why you draw Wall Street? <laughs> Sometimes you can draw space. You could draw like people walking in and out uh, in space. It, it did not matter. The illustration itself is the, the most important thing to you. Like it has to be beautiful at least. So that's how difficult it is to do uh, editorial. That sometimes the article is so dull and so boring, but you have to draw something fascinating out of it it's painful and after that i kind of get what editorial it is like i i this is another piece for new york times um book review um i do sketches like faster and happier and this is the final and this is another um three sketches i did for for also a financial magazine uh, I think the theme was like left no drop behind. And this is the final. Um, I also figured out that uh, I personally really enjoy doing lifestyle illustrations. So these are for, um, I think for Washington Post and art and style cover. Book guide, I think it's a summer book guide. I did four illustrations for the newspaper. And these are uh, some of my uh, smaller like project for magazine covers. I think this is for readers campus for a kids mag uh, middle school kind of uh, magazine cover. And this is for a brand new uh, magazine um, from China, also for teenagers. And this, these illustrations are also for that same magazine uh, about museum. And this is another project I did for a shopping mall. Sometimes their schedule is also short, like they want it in two weeks. So I also put some of these projects in the short term project, uh, short turnaround process um, project. 
they always ask for faster turnaround like these projects as well this is um a very cool project um they have like projected the whole thing onto a grand central which is like one of the coolest projects i've ever done they have like sculptures underneath it like they have a lot of like interaction um installations underneath um this grand central wall so i i do feel like uh, I, I was a like i'm really proud of this project um and this project also got me far away. Uh, like I got, I won several awards for this project as well. Also, this is Airbnb Harlem poster. I got uh, my first medal from uh, Society of Illustrators. And this is also uh, my first product design uh, in 2016. It was uh, for a stick with me chocolate um, package. It's actually in Soho. If you're in Europe, go check it out. They're fantastic chocolates. Um, I really enjoy this idea. And this is the jacket of the the the, the chocolate. Uh, they designed the box as a book, so I designed the jacket. So this is another uh, project I remember uh, clearly about, like arguing with art director. Um, we are kind of talking about like whether this article is positive or negative and I won. So sometimes you can debate and kind of like try to make people understand what they're talking about. And then we can just discuss, you know, we, we can all talk and debate um, as equal people. So uh, after this project, I do remember I gained a lot of confidence as well <laughs> as a person. <laughs> And this is another uh, short turnaround project for a language learning um, application. And my word is chaos. So I just love to draw octopus. So sometimes you can train yourself um, editorial ability using this method. So you can pick some like interesting words and you draw random things. You draw things you like the most. You draw a horse if you like to draw a horse and try to make it narrative. Sometimes you will know that a lot of those um, editorial pieces, you can use a similar method. And this is another very memorable uh, project I did for uh, uh, Atlantic, I think. So it's about gun control. So I have three sketches. It's basically about this woman. She was driving randomly and she got hit. She got sh shot on her left shoulder randomly. Like probably someone is hunting deers and then the 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 bullet just like randomly fly through her her uh left arm um and she drove back and then called the police while waiting for the police he he he, he felt very she felt like very painful uh and she got all her memories um being like her grandpa owns like a gun shop uh, and then her teenage time her boyfriend's favorite like meetup was like hunting you know so her town is a hunting um, place with a lot of guns. So she basically grew up with guns. So when I got this ne very narrative article about a long period of time, I decided to, to give multiple solutions for different time periods. So the first one is, um, so the first one is actually a uh, gun shop, teenage gun shop. And then the middle one is like uh, the shooting. The third illustration uh, sketch is the uh, hunting season when she was like a teenager. And then the art director, uh, the art director picked uh, the gun shop idea. So I did this illustration. I really enjoyed this project. And also New York Times, they sometimes hire people to do like on call. I don't know if they still do it, but like they used to do it a lot. They hire me for two weeks on call. So. Whenever they ask me to do it, I need to do it. Yeah, so for two weeks straight. So sometimes I do four illustrations, sometimes I do three illustrations for them. And this is one of them. Uh, I think these series are all for book review, a uh, romantic uh, theories. They, they talk about like multiple like books for, for one article. Uh, this is another one um, for a book. So, and also this is uh, for 
for um, uh, Scientific America. Also short turnaround, only two weeks for three illustrations. Um, I re really enjoy limited color palette sometimes for these fast turnaround um, uh, uh, projects. Okay, so it's the short turnaround is actually the longest here uh, because I have the most amount of uh, short turnaround book uh, project. So medium is actually easier. Medium is basically like month based. For example, they want something in one month. They want something in um, more than three weeks or uh, book illustration, book project, uh, book cover design. <clears throat> so the first example is Google. Uh, tech company projects, they tend to give you like a little bit more time, normally more than two weeks. Uh, not like New York Times, like for one day <laughs> or, or three days. Uh, so you get some back and forth um, with Google Doodle. Um, and this is an app with Apple, Today Tab. They, uh, Today Tab is basically like a tech company version of editorial. Um, you draw a lot of tech related um, topics. And these are uh, more considering like um, advertising. So I did uh, the dog year, uh, new year, Chinese new year for the whole Apple branding, new year branding. So it appears everywhere uh, for Chinese new year period. And also I did like the pig year, uh, Chinese new year um, branding for um, QVB, like a uh, shopping mall in uh, Sydney. So I draw a lot of flowers, but actually a lot of the flower petals and the flowers are little pigs. So they also made this on the left, the right side, you see like the tree, the, the peach flower tree. It's actually all the flowers are made of like pink pigs. I think it's a lovely idea. <laughs> I think it's funny and uh, lovely. It became like kind of popular, like for photos. And I also do a lot of like, uh, um, brandings for like some uh, exhibitions, openings and stuff. So these projects are easy and fun and kind of like have more freedoms. And this is the Airbnb uh, application. This is, this is Airbnb uh, application. They sometimes want like a series of illustrations for famous like um, locations for several cities. And this is, um, uh, book uh, 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 book covers designs for for penguin yeah and this is a new project uh, for uh, we transfer so they sometimes collaborate with uh, different brands and then they ask illustrators to do some like um, motion a little bit motion illustration so mine was actually for a watch uh, but the watch is like on top of it so I will not show it but like the uh, illustration is like from nighttime to to dawn um, and then, uh, because this this is the the watch the keyword of the that watch concept, so very interesting. So I will show you the whole thing like this. Yeah, so very interesting and very easy project, uh, but I enjoy it a lot. Uh, also, I did um, one project for um, Apple, uh, Apple um, iPad, iPad Pro. Um, I think it was like the new one. Not the newest one, I think, but like uh, from one or two years ago. Um, I did this uh, piece for their uh, official website. And they made it to animation. So when you roll the front page, you will see it. Uh, probably not now, but like... Uh, it was there for almost a year. So long-term project books, all right? Children's books. Spent two years. <laughs> so you know it's long-term project. This is the brand new book I did, um, The Great Barrier Reef. Spent a lot of time drawing these, but I enjoy it so much. I think I have like almost like seven to eight color palettes for the whole book. For example, um, some of the illustrations I use all, use all of the color palette, for example, the cover, obviously. Um, but, the full, but for this one, for example, I, I really enjoyed this piece. I spent like only like two hours on this one, but it showed so 
like the result is so great. Um, I only use like the darker blue and then the red um, for everything. So two colors. And this is one of my favorite page as well. Deep ocean little, little creatures. I just love it. Nighttime, nighttime. Sometimes when I got these uh, illustrations, I want to make it very lonely because I, I believe that ocean is like gigantic, of course, and then human beings should be like tiny compared to ocean. So when I do these kind of book projects, I tend to show the kids, show the adults that uh, the world is obviously very beautiful, but I want them to have like a beautiful dream with it. I want them to stay on one page for a long time. So I spent a lot of time like um, digging into the details, um, not only like the realistic side, but also when I saw a reference, I need to like transform um, the reference, realistic reference to, to like a cartoony, slightly cartoony version, but not generic. So I spent a lot of time on that. And this piece is like one of my favorite, like imaginary ocean. Yeah, so a lot of uh, little pages uh, for this book, a lot of fishes. A lot of creatures, a lot of um, history um, reference um, transforming to illustration. I designed this uh, interesting frame for it as well. And fishes, more fishes. I really enjoy sharks, by the way. Um, after that, I I, at the same time, the whole um, COVID period, I de decided to do a, a project because I happened to uh, need to draw like 12 um, months uh, ma magazine cover. So I decided to make it into a series. So this is January, 2020. So it's the whole uh, COVID time. The whole project is finished by iPad, uh, Procreate. I think I only use like three, two or three brushes for, for the whole series. And this is the third one. So it's March. So COVID started. Yeah. So that the months I need like extra warm. Uh, this is uh, when I think it's April. I really want to go to camping. And this is May, one of my favorite from the whole year. This is June, summer, almost summer, July. And this is August, September. October, November, December. I, I think I lost one here. <laughs> yeah, um, but it's like, this is November. I remember this one is November. And uh, this one is December. So this whole year, uh, I've been staying at home, of course, um, and dreaming of like traveling. So I created this dog. Um, I want him to do it for me. Very simple idea. Also, I did like several projects for um, Apple Korea. Also seasonal uh, topic, really uh, lovely um, project. And also I want to show a little bit of my older books, Everest here. And then also a hug is for holding me, another very sweet candy kind of book project um, during the very heavy duty <laughs> uh, ed editorial world. And also I did this uh, book uh, one or two years ago. It came out last year, Our World. It's a ball book, it's a globe book. It has magnets, so it stands really well. It's with Fiden. 
So I also like to draw little details. So I slowly became like a nonfiction person. Weird, <laughs> but I enjoy this. I, I like to draw tiny people, tiny um, little footsteps. <laughs> uh, this was definitely one of my favorite piece, piece from the whole book. Animals, more animals. The fisheye globe kind of effect um, landscape. Uh, and a lot of space, space uh, stars. So I normally thought of like organized um, my time um, using different methods uh, like journals, diary, digital cam uh, calendars, daily time schedule, notebooks, because, because I have definitely definitely a messy person. I'm not very, very messy person uh, in terms of uh, time schedule. So uh, be a freelance, being a freelancer, you will definitely have this in your mind that it is so important to be organized. So important. So if you're messy, if you, in, at school, you can't keep up with multitasking and stuff, try to get this notebook and a nice, really nice pen and write everything down every day. It will help you to clear your mind and put everything onto the notebook. And then you don't have to remember. Your brain will feel slightly relieved. I, I, this helped me a lot. Um, and I spent a lot of time cooking um, during the COVID time. And I spent a lot of time with my kitty, Popo. Her name was Popo, P-O-E, P-O-E. So Abigail Allen Poe, you know, black cat, Popo. Also, he died in Baltimore. I mean, Abigail Allen Poe, so perfect. I love my cat. They are so smart. They're so smart. They, um, they never, they, they, they never influenced by human being. They, they actually shaped our, activity to make themselves happier and more comfortable. Um, I drink a lot of coffee as well. Um, tiny little objects everywhere. So sometimes I show you a lot of my illustration works, but I do feel like during the COVID time, uh, when I think inside, uh, when I take a lot of me time, I do enjoy this um, moment with myself. Uh, I can focus on who I am and what I want to draw, what I want to talk to the world, what, what I want to share with the audience. And I love my vintage toys as well, Playmobil. It looks like Kubrick's uh, movie. I like my tea time as well. So, I just want you to know that finding a job is not the end of the world for illustrators. So a lot of people, they, they worry if they go to the job genre, then they lost for being a freelance illustrator, but never the case. Uh, there are no rules. Just relax, just relax and take a deep breath and think about this. Um, there is no failure, basically. Even if you get married and have two kids in two years, uh, it's, it doesn't mean like you're you're not successful illustrator. It means you need to pause front illustration, you know, and then just take another journey. So your other journey is so fulfilled. So I feel like you shouldn't be like very worried about this part. Um, try every possible way. Um, learn to say no. You need to shape your uh, portfolio because to me portfolio is just like a, um, like a gallery, you own this gallery and you hang whatever pieces in the gallery. Um, you attract um, the right people to come into your gallery and to buy your art. It's the same thing. It's the same thing uh, as your portfolio. So it's not going to be like, oh, I need to show everything I have. I need to say every yes to every project. It's not like that. You can shape your portfolio 
based on saying yes or no. So sometimes some of the projects are not in your interest zone, just say goodbye to it as fast as you can so that you can have more time for future projects. Um, don't show everything to your portfolio. Like don't put every style into your portfolio. Pick the one that, are, that you really want to go moving forward in your portfolio. Make it simple. Make it like very exclusive, very clean so that you, your audience know what kind of jobs you can do. Even if you have like different genres, it's okay. Just put whatever you feel like you want to go in the future. You can slightly like shape it and then switch out pieces in the future. And also getting lots of commissions doesn't mean you're a good illustrator. I have seen it a lot of times that some of the illustrators, they are, they're not the best uh, illustrator, but they get enough jobs um, to support themselves. Uh, I think it's a very, very awesome and good uh, stuff, but it doesn't equal like good illustrator. So you have to have this in your mind that um, money is a different thing. It can be a different thing. Um, hope, can, hope you can be the person you like. I talked to you a lot about this and then I realized the whole journey of me is actually discovering who I am or just have a really long dialogue with myself. So uh, it's all about preference. What you, your choice, um, your color palette, your style, the way you draw people, the way you want to shape your portfolio, it's all you. So you can make your own decisions for everything. So I wish you can be the person you like first so that you can be a first, uh, you can be your, you know, your illustrator after. Illustrator is always after this. And before thinking about style, you should think about the message in your drawing first. This is really important. How you draw is never important, more important than what you draw. This is what, just what I want to say. And hope, hopefully every day after 7 p.m., after you very organized, after you figure your day out, you can have this moment. You can have exact this moment in your life every day, every night after seven o'clock or eight o'clock or any schedule you have, but hopefully you can have this. And hope you feel happy again with drawing hope I feel happy again with drawing and but hope you have a good relationship with drawing for a long time and had a good traveling after COVID please please and love your cat thank you thank you so much that was incredible in all kinds of ways um do you are you okay to take a couple questions yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So um, several students, and this is when you were diagramming out all the different work you had to do. Um, so, and I, I think you started to talk about sort of how to stay healthy and have that balance, but um, I want to use Anna Zimmer's question. How do you stay in love with making art even when you start to feel indifferent about it? So maybe it's about those moments when you know you know, maybe there's creative block or it just starts to feel different for you. Do you have any suggestions about how to work, work your way out of yeah. that? Yeah, um, I have two suggestions. Uh, first suggestion is sometimes when you can't create art, it's definitely not related to art. You have to like kind of detect what is the source. For example, if you lost a family, for example, it's like a painful memory, right? So during that moment, if you can't draw art, it's normal. Or if you like suffer from some uh, not very healthy like uh, stories or like you have depression uh, issue. So those moments, if you can draw art, but you will not realize that that's the reason, sometimes it will be like, um, your mind is like weird sometimes because I experienced that before uh, when I uh, cannot detect which is the reason I can draw. I just feel I can't draw at all. Like I don't have anything to say. I feel upset every day. I don't want to do anything. <laughs> it's sometimes not the drawing. It's sometimes you have to like, you need a psychiatrist 
during that moment. So, um, or, or at least like organized or like uh, drink some tea and pause. And after probably one month of rest or several days of rest, you can start drawing again. So it's not the drawing's fault, you know. This is one uh, thing I want you to de de detect. Um, you need to deal with the other thing first and then treat drawing. Then it will go fluent because drawing is basically your life. You draw whatever your life tells you. So the second um, solution is I mentioned like you have to kind of have your own safety place for drawing. So I actually had uh, sketchbooks um, that are, um, I, I have sketchbooks that are no rules. Like as I mentioned uh, one hour before, uh, two, uh, two hours before, like uh, the, the, the rules are only belong to yourself. You don't have to like force yourself to practice. The, the sketchbook will be personal. It will be like your diary or whatever you want to draw. You don't have to like, I want to practice every day, but that sketchbook will be like waiting for you every time you want to draw something and have the feel of drawing. So I always notice that when you stuck, um, you keep drawing random stuff for like um, two or three days. It came out slowly. It's weird. Like it, it, it's probably different for different people, but like I do find out that sometimes when I ran out of ideas, I just stopped for several days and or doodle random stuff uh, without thinking, then I will slowly get uh, the sense back. That's great, thank you. Um, we have several questions about the way you use color. Um, just how, um, how do you go about choosing your color palettes? Um, do you think of it before starting a sketch or is it after? Um, what, what are your main inspirations for your color? I hope it's okay to group them all together. So many questions about color, but. <laughs> um, yeah, it's okay. Like I, uh, I normally um, do like limited color because I don't have like a good color instinct, but um, using this method will help me to like have a, like preview in my mind um, because everything you plan out needs to be ahead of time uh, when you use this method. For example, if you want to have a black hair, um, a black shirt, and then a uh, light skin tone, for example. So if you have like a blue and a red, you have two colors. What you want to think of is, because you already marked the darker spots, um, you know these two layers, the black and blue layers, you need to draw twice to be able to multiply onto each other, right? So this is like a very preview kind of method. Like I have to have the image in my head first. Um, I kind of know what's going on first and then I can go into the coloring process. Um, so this method, Definitely, I think of uh, color palette ahead of time. And I will do some experiment, especially more color in involved. For example, just like the, um, the barrier reef. The barrier reef is like, uh, I have like many colors. It's coral reefs, right? So it's colorful. Um, when I pick out colors, I will think like, because ocean is blue, right? So I want like at least like two, three different kinds of blue to support this ocean because every page will be blue if you only have one blue. So it will be the same blue, it's boring. So I want to involve um, two different shades of blue. One is uh, a regular like beautiful blue one. Another one is slightly greener um, blue. So I also picked out one yellow, more orange-ish yellow and one orange is red. So when I have that red and then I turn it light on, I layered that pink with the a greenish blue, I got a really, really beautiful darker blue. Hmm. So you have to kind of mix your experiment and try to find the combinations that because of the, uh, the concept of this book is based on ocean. So you definitely need different shades of blue uh, and your other colors, it will be coral reefs color, but also the color palette will support the blue to have even more variations. Thank so you. So that's my logic. Right. Yeah. Um, do you have some questions about your process? I mean, you outline things in short term and medium term and 
shown us sketches in that process, but does it, do you feel like you have fairly consistent process or does it change a lot depending on who you're working with or the project? Mm. That's such a vague question. I'm sorry. I'm mangling one of the student, couple of students questions. In this. <laughs> uh, yeah. It, it's, it's kind of like a, like a difficult topic to, to, to describe. Uh, I will say it depends on project, um, but my process is pretty much the same. Um, even for books, I tend to draw bigger sketches uh, at the first beginning instead of little dummy, dummy um, ideas. Uh, I, I really enjoy like drawing bigger sized sketches for books um, because traditionally people like to draw like small, like, you know, sample books for, for tiny, tiny little square like that. Uh, and then do the layouts and draw like a uh, stick person. <laughs> um, I, I just want to see the visual immediately. Uh, I'm that kind of person. So I will use those as um, my small sketch. I don't complain anything. If I need to redo, I just redo, uh, redraw. So uh, for editorial, it's basically just line work with a little bit of shading if necessary. Um, advertising to uh, the same. So, so to me, it's always like fast turnaround and uh, mm -hmm. slow turnaround. The sketch time is similar. I do sketches faster because I trust, I like to trust my instinct shapes. Um, I know myself enough to notice that sometimes when I do finals, I tend to go tighter. Like, my habit of drawing final is definitely tighter. Like I draw little details and I will draw and draw and draw and make the shapes more perfect, more perfect, more tight. So I want to follow my instinct uh, a little bit sometimes. So my sketches, I do a very fast but stable uh, line works. Sometimes the shapes are way better than me trying to like change it many times. So I will use my tight st coloring style to kind of follow my instinct sketches. So that way it has the best combination. Um, it's, so it's very, very personal. So you have to understand what's like lacking you. For example, what's, what kind of um, uh, final you did and what kind of um, direction you tend to go to and what's your not so super, uh, what, what's your shortage? You know what I mean? <laughs> um, we also have a lot of people very interested in what kind of brushes you use. And you mentioned in, in um, the pandemic drawings were just three brushes, but I'm wondering if you could talk yeah. more about it. And specifically, Juliana asked, would you consider as an illustrator working collaboratively with other artists to work through a collection or maybe even a collaborative Procreate brush collection. Um, she adds that she loves your work and she's trying to expand her techniques, but um, could you just tell us a little bit about what brushes you, you use or how, how do you approach tackling all the brushes? I, <laughs> yeah, I actually don't use a lot of the brushes. Um, I find out that I only need like several brushes. Um, so as long as I can find the one that's like perfect for that part, uh, I will stick it, stick to it for like five years until I got tired of it. So uh, for, for example, the Barrier Reef one, I only, the whole book, I only use two brushes. <laughs> one is a pencil brush from out of nowhere. I found it like, like probably like eight years ago. I had like a hundred, like several brushes I got from friend and then I, found this one, this one that's very useful <laughs> and I use it forever. Um, also for uh, my Procreate, I really enjoy the HB and then the 6B <laughs> um, brush. I use them for everything. Surprise, <laughs> but I'm uh, expanding more. So I do have recommendations if you want to try out like free brushes, more free brushes, uh, Adobe, uh, Photoshop, they, uh, they release a lot of like Kyle Webster brushes uh, for free if you subscribe. Um, hey, Liz, hey, Liz, hey, it's Marty. I just want to say Kyle came and did a demo with us last week. It was awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah I love him. Yeah. yeah, I love him. Yeah, because I worked with, uh, uh, um, I worked with a fresco before. 
Like I I awesome. uh, did like o- uh, online demos um, in like 99U um, conference. So I performed, I, I performed a uh, live awesome. for, so, for all, everyone. So just really quickly, Fresco versus Procreate, your nutshell analysis. What's, what's, do you have an opinion? <clears throat> the distinction mm. between Fresco and Procreate? I, I found uh, both of them are really easy to use. Uh, I use a lot of my, um, my editorial pieces, um, sketches. I, I do sketches a lot in Procreate because I find the perspective guidelines are very useful. If you want to draw a lot of like 3D buildings, they, they have their guideline, um, very, very useful. Not perfect useful and Procreate has its pro and cons for example you can open a lot of layers when your file is like super big uh, this is their issue um, you right. have layer limitations on a lot of uh, files uh, plus yeah. you can't you can't put a PSD version uh, file into Procreate you can export um, PSD but you can't put PSD back to Procreate. so it's it's you know there are some issues i know yeah, when yeah. i use it every day yeah but for um f- fresco it's kind of the similar situation like i do find the brush t- touches are very similar to photoshop it's very similar uh procreate sometimes i find it like a little bit difficult to render because uh, the brushes are kind of like a lot of the brushes are, are fuzzy uh, they try to like mimic the realistic kind of uh, texture so you draw them harder you, your hands are sore sometimes, um, but use uh, fresh sugar. Yeah, with fresco, it's like very smooth. Um, but um, they also have like, they don't have the guideline. So, um, but you can import your own Photoshop brushes to fresco and because you, you have creative cloud, so you can like import export files with no question on different platform and devices. So I think you can use both. For yeah, yeah, yeah. right, right. Find the right tool for <laughs> yeah. the job. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I have one last question, uh, sort of technical. Jennifer asks, um, do you recommend taking strides to get a firmer grasp on the business side of freelancing earlier than senior year? Um, I, I guess like when, when, when would it be, when and how much of the business aspects of freelancing would you suggest for a student to be familiar with? I, I feel, I, to be honest, I, um, I experienced myself as well. Like, um, although I, I agree that if you know about the job or um, the freelancing situation as soon as possible, uh, or send out to to our directors early, as earlier as possible. It's probably better for your career, uh, but I don't mind to wait a little bit sometimes. Um, it because it's there already. Like all the necessary messages are there. Uh, if you are good enough, the right clients will definitely come to you. Like. I, I know like you need to promote, you need to send out to people, but like sometimes the best student, they just like low themselves, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, um, so even if you feel like you might be struggling in the future, um, it's not too late to study this after graduate or almost graduate. Okay. Um, fo- 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 I, focus on schoolwork. <laughs> do you have any, I guess I have another question. Um, I guess any advice for just how to get a better, for students to find a better sense of their medium or growing in their medium um, or sense of kind of themselves as, as an artist or illustrator? Oh, this is such a big question. <laughs> I know. I know it's so vague. Uh, uh, yeah, it's it's so big. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know when, but like it's definitely like ongoing, <laughs> like a journey for for years. Um, just keep at it, yeah. And <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, because you will change 
your mm-hmm. age will change. So the things you like will change um, on time, based on time. I, I, I do feel like probably a one way to practice this is to um, try to criticize your own work a little bit sometimes. Like, for example, if you don't even know your illustration is finished or not, then you're definitely slightly far away from that. So um, if some teacher tells you like, oh, this feels 60% finished, but you feel like it's 100% finished, during that moment, if more than two teachers or friends tell you, like, I feel like you can still work on this piece a little bit more, but you feel like, I feel like it's satisfying. It's, it's perfect. This piece is already done. Then you have to have this opportunity to question yourself a little bit. Uh, like maybe it's time to move into this piece once more, to push yourself once more. Like that's the only suggestion I want people to know because I noticed that the finished level uh, based on my teaching experience, a lot of students, they cannot tell if their digital illustration is finished or not. They don't even have a clue. <laughs> like, so you have to train yourself on that. Um, by doing that, some, some small tips. Um, first of all, zooming, okay? If you're a digital illustration, please zoom in as much as you can and clean it up because I always see flaws here and there. It's so easy to fix, but you just don't want to spend a lot of time on those little things. So illustration, this is definitely a biggest part because a lot of us, like half of the time, uh, we're just cleaning up the edges and doing like, like cleaning stuff uh, for coloring. So definitely take more time on that and push yourself harder uh, onto small details. I think that will at least get, show your potential to have one illustration more finished. That's great advice. Um, I just wanna tell you some of the comments students have been writing, they just like love the way that you embrace nature and using different media and that they they just really love your work and how oh, thank you so whimsical much. it is, the colors you use. So, um, and I really, I do appreciate you sharing all the work you do, but also just how you work and how to balance kind of life and, and art together. So um, it's been really great to have you here tonight. So thank you so much. Oh, thank you so, so much for giving me this opportunity. Okay. Thanks everyone. Everyone's clapping. <laughs> How can I see like, oh, charts? Ah, 